Hey everybody, welcome to Get to Know Your Wedding Pro. My name is Reed with Best Made Videos. We are a wedding videography company based out of West Seattle, Washington. And today I'm joined by a, a longtime friend. I was trying to figure out, I think we first met at, at a like a, an event. It wasn't even a wedding. I think it was like a car show or um, I know we did the one the, like under the sea, Atlantis or something or other. I think that was you uh, downtown. But anyway, it's Jessica with Seven of Hearts Photography. I want to thank you so much for coming on today. And uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us who you are and what you do. I am Jessica, obviously Seven Hearts Photography. Uh, wedding photographer, boudoir photographer, um, anything but small children because they don't listen. Uh, <laughs> I've been doing this for about 10 years. The first five years I was absolutely horrible because I'm self-taught. I wouldn't have hired me in a million years, uh, but that has definitely changed. Um, I got my, my big thing is seven of hearts. I took my grandparents' brand for their cattle. I didn't want to start a farm, so I decided to use it for photography instead. It's a lot less dirty. Um, but yeah, I like what I do. Yeah, and, and you're based up north, right? You have a studio yeah. in, in uh, Everett? I do. I have a fantastic studio in Everett. It's currently shared with another business that I was running, but in October, I take it over and it becomes all photos, all photography. Perfect. And so uh, kind of, I know that we've met and, and talked and you know, we've worked together and weddings and stuff. Um, you talk about like you really do do kind of the gamut of, of wedding, like you said, you know, anything except small children, but like talk about kind of why you do the things that you do and why you enjoy, you know, taking photos and, and making art like that. Um, I like to be able to show the world uh, and people in general how I see them. I was explaining boudoir to my 10 year old daughter, which was a little awkward because she was getting embarrassed looking at the photos. And I had to sit her down and be like, no, that's this isn't anything dirty. This isn't anything to be embarrassed of. It's just sometimes we forget to see ourselves the way the world sees us and to see ourselves in that light. So my job is to show you um, how I see you, how the world should see you and how you should see yourself, which is obviously gorgeous. Um, but yeah, uh, weddings are easy, but boudoir is more fun. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about, I mean, it does seem like it's kind of this thing in the last, and, and I mean, I know I was not really in this world until, you know, I kind of started best made videos, but like, you know, talk about boudoir and I mean, is it kind of becoming, you know, I see a lot of like grooms get it on like their wedding day gifts. Like talk about the context of that and, and why people would, would choose to do something like that. Um, well, even today I had like later today, I have a bridal boudoir session, but honestly, most of the, the women that I'm working with are choosing to do this for themselves. They pick it up and they are like, you know what? I'm having, I'm having a bad month. I'm going to go take my clothes off for the camera, <laughs> but they come in super nervous and they leave and they feel fantastic. And I I'll say about 50% of my current clients are repeat. So that they come in quarterly and do a shoot and they just, it's a confidence building thing. Um, a lot of brides do come in. So I have quite a few bridal options for outfits in studio, but, uh, yeah, no, it's mostly about themselves and a confidence boost. Yeah. Do you find that people are really shy, uh, when they come in or nervous the first time and how do you kind of work through that? They're always really nervous. It's kind of weird to be like, Hey, let me put on some lingerie for a camera, but it's super easy for me. Cause I'm, a, I'm, definitely a little bit weird myself. So if you just talk to them like they're normal people and treat them like they have their clothes on, <laughs> it's a little bit easier. Um, but it's mostly just about being social and talking them through it. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, some of the funniest moments we we've had at weddings, I remember is like, you know, the groom kind of getting that book and whether it's the first look or, or while, you know, maybe she's still getting ready and, um, you know, he'll look and it's always so funny to kind of see the reactions and like, they want to <laughs> uh, like turn it away. Like, so it's just there. It's like, they want to hide it, you know, cause you know, it's cool to think like, okay, here you're getting married to this beautiful woman and she took the time to do that. And I mean, mm -hmm. it's, I think it's really neat. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of clients will give it to somebody. They'll share it. Um, a couple of them are like Instagram. It's all over Instagram. I'm like, that is not somewhere my dad would be happy me putting photos, but <laughs> like, get it girls, get it. Um, no, the grooms definitely get excited. Uh, some don't want you to share it, which is fine. So I'll say about 90% of my clients, I don't, I don't share their images. So my portfolio, I have to have models come in for my portfolio. Yeah, because it is really, you know, a really personal thing, yes. right? I mean, it is, it's, you know, I feel bad enough kind of bombarding certain couples with like taking them in like wedding photos or, you know, because they're like, you know, you're, I'm sure they're like, okay, we get it read, like we're kind of done with this. But it's another thing when it's kind of this intimate moment, right? And you don't necessarily want to like share it with everybody. 
Yeah, most times, times I don't, we aren't able to share it. And then I half my clients that come in are my bride. So I'll go work their wedding later. So I'm like, we've already got a great bond when we start their wedding as well. Um, but I, they're, even then they're like, yeah, you can share the wedding photos, but definitely not those. And it's, it's a respect thing too. So kind of, how did you, you know, you talked about being self-taught and you mm -hmm. know, how did you kind of get into photography and kind of walk me through kind of the origin story? Um, I had a kid. And at the time I was married, my husband told me I was taking her to the studio too much. And that was probably true, which is worse is that I was taking her to like the Walmart photo studio, which if I look back now and I just want to shun my younger self and be like, what were you thinking? Um, my ex bought me a camera and I think within a week I had sold that camera and upgraded to a new one. And then three months later I was like, yeah, no, I like this. This is way better than being a billing specialist. I don't, I still have to deal with numbers, but in a completely different sense. And then it just, for the first five years, I, I worked everything, anything I could get my hands, I worked it. And I was terrible. I didn't understand the camera at all. And then I think one day it just clicked. And so I've been doing this. My daughter's 10 years old now. So I've been doing it for about 10 years. That's crazy. So yeah, so you kind of started off needing someone to take better photos of your daughter, right? Yeah. I did. I was like, I just, she was so cute. And I had that like mom hormone where I think she's super cute, but babies are, oh, she was so funny looking. <laughs> she grew out of it though. She's adorable now. So, so is that, but were you, have you always kind of been something, someone to like kind of dive into new things like that? I mean, it seems like that's to go from just buying a camera, you know, this whole spiral downward. For the longest time, I still worked as a billing specialist. So I ran, like I worked a full-time job. I was a mom and I ran a business on the side and it was exhausting, it was completely exhausting. And then there was one day where I was like, I just don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to sit at the desk. So I dropped it and uh, jumped into it, which I think was terrifying if I remember, because even just opening a studio was terrifying, but you don't know until you do it. Yeah, I was, you know, talk to people about that when they kind of make that leap and like the fear, was there like a confidence in that or were you, did you, I mean, have a fallback plan or what, what was kind of the mindset? I think younger me was like gung ho about everything. And I think the older I get, the more paranoid I get. I think there's just so much more writing on it. Um, I decided to jump in because it was either I'm going to continue only shooting weddings if I, and I don't want to only shoot weddings. I want to shoot both. I want to do the boudoir as well. And I was like, if I don't do this, then I'll be stuck in this mode forever. So I just, you have to jump and it's okay to be afraid. It's okay to be scared of everything that's going on. But I also have an extremely fantastic network of friends and family and they are always rallying behind me. So D did you kind of grow up artsy to kind of get into this or what was your passions kind of growing up? Did that kind of lead you down this road? I have always, I think I didn't get any side of like the linear thinking at all. I am all art. I am all like wavy lines as far as like thinking process goes. I have, I did photography when I was like 10 years old for my little brother. He, he wrestled. And so we had to travel all the time. And my parents were trying to shut me up, which was nearly impossible. So they gave me a camera and they're like, go take pictures. Like just get away from us. Um, but that's back in the day of film. And I just like lost like wasted so many rolls of film. It was incredible. Um, 7 million dog photos later. <laughs> I ended up not doing that. I've painted, I draw, I'll do any sort of art you want. Like I have a craft room. I sew, I made all my daughter's clothes when she was younger. So yeah, definitely like a little bit of a nerd when it comes to art stuff. Uh, and then, so like you said, you were doing uh, billing specialists and kind of more uh, kind of office jobs, right? So was that, you know, difficult to feel like you were more maybe cooped up or when you wanted to kind of be more expressive or what was that kind of like? It was, I, so I worked for five years as a billing specialist and it was the worst experience ever. I would make phone calls and let people know that the company had messed up and that they owed us like $6,000 back bill, blah, blah, blah. And it was, they would just yell at me all day long. Um, and beyond that, I was working on numbers and I like numbers. They're fine and they make sense, but it was a union job. So I was done by 10 AM. I was like eight 30 to 10 AM. I completed all my tasks for the day. So while working there, I joined every committee possible. I started like all of the volunteer outreach programs that they have, which are still going today. And it's been like six years. So I was anything like birthday committees, decorating, whatever I could do to not be at my desk. So yeah, no, desk is not for me yet. Yeah, I'm at a desk all the time now, but it's different.
Yeah, right. I mean, I'm yeah, I'm behind the computer all the time. But it, yeah, it does feel different when it's something that you're more, you know, connected to what you're passionate about, right? It's completely different than sitting there and dealing with some, something and having somebody tell me what to do. Instead, I have a really demanding boss and that boss is me. So did you, did you have any, uh, what did you think, you know, when you were going to start the business, did you think like it was going to be easier? Did you think certain things were going to be, you know, easier than they were? Were you, you know, certain challenges or what, what were kind of your thoughts entering into doing photography? I think younger, I was very much like super optimistic. It was going to be all super easy. I didn't even think about the fact that like I had to get a business license and pay taxes and actually learn how to file my taxes. Um, The business side of it isn't exactly what I want to be doing, but it allows me to do the art side of it. Um, Even now, I still don't like the business side of it. I just want to go take pictures for free, but that's, that's not how you eat. So, but yeah, it's different. Were there things that you feel like you used to really struggle with and now you're better at? Uh, Lighting in general. (laughs) Uh, Calling clients. I used to, because I was on the phone before, I used to just hate the phone. Um, I can call my clients now and not have a problem. Scheduling meetings. Basically anything that actually has to do with like the business side of it, which is what I went to school for. And it makes no sense that I'm like, was afraid of the business side of it. And yet that's, I'm actually pretty dang good at it when it comes down to it. Um, that and like taxes scared me for the longest time. I had somebody else do it and now I'm doing my own taxes. So it's just a couple buttons. If you take the time to learn it, you you'll figure it out. Oh, see, that still scares me. That's one thing that I never, <laughs> I had a, I remember this is a quick side note, but I had, I think it was like the, like the third quarter or something that I was going to need to do. And I made the mistake of having just one credit card and thinking that I would split everything and be like, well, this business. And then, you know, when you start a business, like you should just have like a business credit card from the first second. And so it came time to file them. And I like opened up my QuickBooks and I hadn't like categorized anything for like, you know, nine months. And I was like, Holy God, like what is going on? So luckily I had just gone to a, like a West Seattle chamber meeting. And so I, I looked at, but you know, they had like an accountant and like the West Seattle chamber. And so I called up and I was like, this guy, Brett answered. And I was like, Brett, I need your help right now. <laughs> Save me. So that's good that you're better off at that than I am. Yeah. My mom was an accountant, so I should have figured some of that out. But yeah. By I still don't. I just like absorb her energy and her, her knowledge. But no, I was like, Hey mom, will you do my taxes? She's like, no, <laughs> like, dang it. So when you said you kind of went to school for business stuff, what did you study? Um, business admin. I thought I was going to take a completely different path in life than I actually ended up taking. Picking up a camera changed everything and all for the better. So, what was your goal, your original goal? I'm, I'm not sure what my original goal was long term, but I know that I wanted to go like work as a buyer somewhere and uh, like just work like, so like a clothing buyer for like, uh, my, my aunt had done that and I had loved the fact that she constantly got to travel. And so I was going to, I was going to go do that. And then I realized how often she isn't home. So, and I wanted, I wanted to be home the whole kid thing. And then camera just changes everything. Did you kind of when in your, uh, when you got into weddings and things like that, had you had a lot of experience in the past? Like I knew nothing about, like, I don't think I had even attended the wedding when I shot my first wedding. Like, what was that like kind of getting into that world? Um, I shot a bunch of backyard weddings to start, but I had no idea what was going on at a wedding. I was like, send me a schedule if you have it. And still to this day, 50% of my brides or my grooms, they, they have like a basic idea of what their schedule is, but they really don't, they don't know. Now, if I was to like plan a wedding, I could plan it out a hundred percent perfect. So I offer my clients, like if they are having troubles with that, like a couple preset schedules that I have just on hand because it's easier when they do have a schedule. But when I first started, I was like, ah, I'm just going to take pictures, have a good day. <laughs> you figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, because it does seem like nowadays, I feel like we're relied on, you know, if the planner, if there isn't a planner there, it's like you're relied on a lot to kind of figure out what's going on. So, oh, yeah, they'll constantly ask me what's next. And I was like, it's your wedding. I don't know. <laughs> so, no, you figure it out, though. I feel like half the time I am a wedding planner. So, but what were you like kind of used to being in that world and kind of like dealing with all that stuff? I mean, I know that like, there's just a lot of like, um, I guess 
internal knowledge that people have in the industry. Like I didn't know kind of anything in there. And like, I look back now and I think like, I, like I didn't even know like what the first look was. Like I didn't know what I was like, Oh, I guess I should shoot, shoot some of these like portraits or like, you know, I was just kind of falling around the photographer. Like I didn't know what was going on. I, I Googled a lot. So I, if I don't know something, I'm going to, I'm going to Google everything and I'm going to try to figure out the little, the little nuances and the details. Um, I had no idea what a first look was. I didn't do that. I'd been married once, but I didn't know, like we didn't, we didn't do anything. And I relied on my photographer, um, in the way that I shouldn't have (laughs) totally am guilty. Um, no, I, I had no idea what was going on. I second shot a couple times as well, which ended up helping out a lot. And I still second shoot. So if I see a photographer whose work that I absolutely love, that's like on a different level than I am, or they shoot with, I shoot a different way than I do. I'll go second shoot for them if I can. I'll, I'll look them up and see if they're in the area and if I can uh, second shoot a wedding just to see how they work. Uh, yeah, I mean, what do you what do you find that you're constantly refining? Is it is it processes? Is it? I mean, obviously you have technical skills down. Is it trying new things? Is it what do, what do you find you're you're working on now? Workflow. It's always my workflow. How can I be more efficient? How can I get things done faster? And how can I get my clients their images quicker? Do you find that it's because people want it's like want, 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 or they will? Do you find that like certain like certain clients are like don't worry about it, no time rush, but they are really appreciative when they get them within like I want to get a wedding done with no no longer than two weeks as far as turnaround time uh, and. Trying to get that done when you have five or six of them is a little bit difficult. So just trying to figure it out. What do you think, you know, you've been doing this a long time now. I mean, 10 years, you know, like you said, you were kind of learning, but you know, but kind of in the industry, what do you think is kind of the biggest shifts that you've seen in terms of photography in 10 years? Is it, I know that there's like a lot of styles nowadays that are really like pervasive or, you know, the way that people work or chart. I mean, you could take it kind of any direction you want, but what do you think is kind of the biggest change that you've seen, you know, a decade in an industry is a long time to kind of witness change change um mostly cell phones the the way cell phones are able to take pictures now people are like they don't they think that the a cell phone can do it and that that's all they need that's all they need to do that and people getting in my way when i'm trying to take a picture <laughs> you'll have family members that because they want them right now they want it now and they have that access to it to be able to get it right now family members i had a um wedding on friday and a gentleman literally rest his camera phone on my head like i could feel his camera on my head I was like and I was like what are you doing but he's so old that I was like okay well guess I'm your balance today <laughs> you just gotta go with the flow um that and the programs we have to like manage manage things how to deliver product how to you know you can I go through shoot proof so you I upload my images and as a client wants to buy images they add to their cart and it goes immediately to the lab and it's mailed to them. Like I don't have to be hands-on about any of it. It's all online. Yeah. What are you talking about with, you know, normally like family stuff and, you know, people kind of get in the way. Like I usually try to kind of not let that bother me, you know, usually, but like we just had a wedding on Saturday and it was like the same kind of thing. Like we've had a couple of uh, first dances or like, um, you know, it could be father, daughter, you know, whatever, like, of those groupings of dances the last couple of times. And there's been people that, you know, like we're all filming one way, right? Like photo video Mm -hmm. or like, or like, you know, a couple like, okay, we're filming this direction towards like the pretty stuff. And then there'll be someone that comes up behind and is shooting against like all of us. And it's always just like frustrating because, you know, like if they wanted to come around and like be part of like the, you know, whatever, or be other way, but it's like, you are now in like everybody's shot, you know, like my shot and the photo and like, so that is, that's frustrating for me. I mean, I try not to, to really, you know, during the ceremony and stuff and people want to complain and I'm kind of like, whatever it, it's 2019. But that to me is when you're now like in that moment with everybody, which is different than just somebody taking photos like alongside you. Right. Yeah. Um, usually I'll, there'll be times where I'll ask them to move or I'll ask, um, I, I can be pretty bold about things. Um, I'll ask a bridesmaid or somebody who's next to me that maybe knows them to be like, Hey, can you go move them? Um, and if they don't want to move or if they want to give me sass and attitude, I'm just like, well, they're your photos, not mine. So yeah, I, I, get, to, I get ballsy. <laughs> I was trying to wave. Yeah. Like I was trying to wave past, like, I think it was the father, daughter, or uh, the mother, son. And I was like trying to wave past, but then I'm like, okay, now I'm like distracting them. Like, I'm not trying to like ruin the moment. We're like, but. Hey, can you, can you move? I'm like, you gotta go. You gotta go take your stuff and move. It's like trying to shoot at a public beach. 
I'm like, all right, well, let me bring the biggest reflector I can to get people out of my way. <laughs> so. Oh, we had that. We were in Newcastle like two weeks ago and we were going to go up on, we just wanted to do like two really quick shots with the bridesmaids standing there. And like these guys were sitting there and like, I kind of like walked over and I was like, Hey, I said, are you guys like, are you just sitting here? Or are you like picnicking? Cause if you're like picnicking then that, I get that that's a lot harder to like move. Move. Yeah. You know, we got a blanket and the food stuff. I'm like, but if you're just sitting on the grass with the beer, like, could you, could you move five feet over for a minute? And like, they were so rude about it. And I was mm-hmm. really kind of like taken aback that, but I didn't, like I said, I felt like I like cognizantly went up and was like trying to figure out like what's going on and like how much work would it actually take them to move. And like, it was very minimal effort just to like slide over, you know? It's the entitlement now. Like there's like a, I'm here first. I got it. And I'm like, it's a photo. Just move three seconds. Like, I don't need it for more than like 20 minutes max. If I'm shooting a, like a whole, a whole shoot. But if it's like five minutes, like Carrie park, like I'll roll in there and just ask you politely to move. And they're like, mm. I'll put my scary face on a mom voice. And if I have to, I remember uh, one of the weddings we shot is Scott and Aaron. And like, we were sitting during the bookie meeting and they were like, we're and this was still like, I hadn't, I don't know, this was a couple years ago. You know, I was still kind of newer and, and, you know, really nervous talking with clients and they're like, Hey, so, um, how, how forceful do you think, (laughs) um, you are, you know, with, with guests because, you know, cause you were already booked with them and they're like, mm-hmm. Jessica says that you're really, um, forceful, um, or could, you know, could be tactfully forceful when, and I'm sitting there in my head, like, what the hell did Jessica tell him? And I was like, well, I said, I guess they were, cause that's really what we want. We really want yeah, somebody want. to get it. Oh, you, was, you're super polite about things though. You're so nice. And I'm like, Hey, get out of the way. Move. And you're like, could you please move? <laughs> And I'm like, no, out now. <laughs> but I love you. You're, you're usually on point with being polite and they'll listen to you. But I don't know. I'm just mean about it. I don't have time for you. Well, it is. And that's the thing is people don't get when we got like, you know, 15 minutes to get stuff done. And, you know, yeah, you kind of got to go. I've got 15 minutes to get all of your couple's photos done. Like, hustle. Move it. So, you know, you sometimes, sometimes I, I think it's a... a challenge to be super polite but at the same time make sure you get what you want out of it well exactly and you don't want to like you know make the situation uncomfortable or like have come across like a i don't know like a mom. <laughs> like a, like a mean person i always do it with a smile on my face which is why i think i get away with everything is because i just smile through it I'm like hey the, move. <laughs> <laughs> the worst one i ever had was we were shooting a wedding and uh i went over to shoot the um like the the arbor or whatever. And the DJ was kind of like off in the corner. And I was like, uh, like, can you get, and I didn't know it was a DJ. I just thought it was like a friend. And I was like, oh, excuse me. Like, can you get out of the way, please? And he like turns around. He's like, Oh, like your assistant just told me that I could be here and that it was fine. And I was like, and he like turns to me, he's like, yeah, Reed, quit being such an ass. And I'm like, oh, shoot, like, I'm sorry. Like, like, so then that was kind of, I like, I learned that because he had even asked, like he had asked my assistant. My assistant, I was like, oh yeah, that's fine. And then I run over like the big bulldog and I was like, oh, okay, I need, maybe I need to like check my, uh, check my focus here. Uh, how do you, how do you kind of keep things fresh nowadays and how do you kind of stay excited? I mean, I know we talk with a lot of photographers, you know, it's like, same thing weekend after weekend, you know, obviously like new couples, new venues and stuff. Like how do you uh, stay excited and inspired? Um, usually now I'm like, I get excited over, I'll have like a, a mix of things. So I don't, it's not just weddings. If I did only weddings, I think I would get tired um, very quickly, but I do like at least one wedding a weekend. And then I also do like, I have a boudoir client coming in today. Um, but the mix of things to edit keeps my like ADHD at bay. So I have to like constantly have something new, uh, that, and I just started food photography. Food doesn't blink. doesn't talk back. I just get really hungry when I edit. So I'll just go down different avenues. If I'm like, eh, I'm going to go get excited about food. So, and food and drink is easy to get excited about. Are there a lot of, and I think we've talked about this in the past, maybe just kind of, you know, BS in, but is there challenge? I mean, I know that this like totally different worlds, right? So like, are there obviously challenges that come in with that? And like, what are some things that maybe people don't think about like doing food? Like, I don't know anything about food photography. Uh, light. Uh, it needs to like your best shot in the morning. I'm not a morning person, but I definitely got up in the morning for pasta, like I'll, pasta for breakfast. Sign me up. Um, no, but yeah, I went in. It's it's mostly about lighting, and then um, just so I I actually shoot the actual food. I'm not going to shoot the fake food. I'm not going to make you use like 
Elmer's glue for milk or anything, but we'll shoot the actual food. And then, but people don't understand is that it's going to take me more than like one or two clicks to get the photo just right. So it's going to, and if, and if you bring it out and it doesn't look pretty, it's still not going to look pretty in camera. So. Yeah. I'm sure there's like all the like misconceptions with that stuff. Yeah. Right? I'm, I'm not a magician. So, I mean, I could be. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you do really kind of switch it up. Like, I mean, even on your site with like the corporate, you know, I mean, there's not a lot of photographers I talk to that have like really defined like a bunch of different niches that they kind of do. Right. I mean, a lot of the people I know are like portrait or, or like, and that includes weddings, right? Like people or whatever, but like talk, you know, d diversifying, is that just to kind of keep your mind fresh or you know like obviously even doing like corporate stuff like you know the events that we met at like more lifestyle stuff yeah mostly it's um if i want to go do something or see something it's photography has taken me there i've met a lot of people through a lot of different worlds uh during my slow season which is usually winter time i'll do trades with other professionals which is fantastic because i met a tattoo artist and i get tattoos in trade <laughs> Um, but, and it's a different, like I'll shoot his work too. So like I'll go in and I'm going to the tattoo expo to shoot his work and then I'll come back and like, I'll get a tattoo out of it and he's awesome. So it's, it's, that keeps me, my mind active though, is I'm like, what do you do? What is your art? I want to learn about what you're doing over here because I get bored quickly. I already know what I'm doing, but yeah, I did get, I did get like some, I have, I think I have three tattoos from him. So it was awesome. <laughs> Do you enjoy it kind of as this, like, like I would say you're like a pretty like outgoing creative person. Like, do you enjoy like making those connections with people and kind of like seeing how other people's minds tick? I love it. It's so much fun to see how somebody else thinks. And if they're like, like what's their sense of humor and how, like, why do you do what you do? What are your little nuances? Um, I've connected, I am build my clientele basically through that connection. Cause you build an interpersonal connection with somebody when you're doing a trade with them. And so I build that and now they're referring me and I'm referring them. And so I've got this little network of like super awesome people. Um, and I get like fun things out of it too. How do you, how do you balance kind of work life, uh, or is that work-life balance? How do you kind of manage that? And obviously with a little one and how do you kind of keep everything in order in that way? Thank God for grandparents. <laughs> if I didn't have my mom, this wouldn't work. Um, I, uh, she's with my mom, my parents all the time. And it's, I'm like, okay, you guys are here. You guys are home. They're close by. Um, that and her dad is pretty active in it. But beyond that, it's like, I'm I'm like, hey, you want to watch a movie? And she's like, okay, are we watching a movie or are you working while we watch a movie? And I'm like, mommy's totally going to work while we watch a movie, but I'll be next to you. <laughs> so she's um, getting smart to it now. <laughs> she's like, mm-hmm. So um, I have, she's 10 now. She's a little bit of a nerd. She's artistic and nerdy. So I'm like, all right, here's an old laptop. Sit down and learn Photoshop. By the time she's 15, she's going to be working for me. So I yeah, she, <laughs> is she kind of already expressing right like kind of interest and stuff like what kinds of things is she interested in um she doesn't ever want to be in front of the camera anymore she just wants to take the camera and go take pictures and i was like but if you're going to go take the camera and take pictures you need to learn how to do it right but then she's also like a 10 year old so she's spazzy so that doesn't really work out and i was like okay well then here's a you know here's photoshop here's certain things you can do and her like 10 year old's attention span is like a quality six minutes here or there, unless they're on their phone. So she's got interest in it. I just need to get her to the point where focusing can last for more than like three minutes, unless it's a video game. Is that an age thing or is that a 2019 thing? It's a 2019 10 year old. Um, I think okay. it's also an age thing too. I think that like, if you're like, I've, I've always been spazzy. So she's, she's a mini me she's definitely gonna be just spazzy in general but if she finds something she's super interested in she'll dive into it um full on i've seen her do it before so i just need to like spark that interest and maybe maybe photos and learning all of these technical terms isn't exactly a 10 year old's interest level uh, but i mean it seems like you know a lot of you know your work kind of bleeds in and it's kind of this whole i mean I just think it's interesting with like kids and like I know a lot of vendors have kids and families and stuff and like them kind of growing up in, you know, we have other photographers where their kids now help them run photo booths or help them run, you know, do 
just, you know, small jobs, help them, you know, whatever. I mean, but is it, but is it, I think it's really neat to kind of, it's a different way to bring kids and family and stuff, but kind of like up into a business, even if it's just kind of trying to give them different in, interests to like inspire them. Oh, I make her come in here and clean all the time in the studio. Let's be real. I was like, you're going to earn your keep, kiddo. Uh, <laughs> so I definitely, I'm like, you could come in, but then she also, like, she'll sit down. I have a TV in here so that the, the kids can watch Netflix if we're doing stuff. Or, like, even little kids, like, I'm like, okay, we'll put on, like, what is that shark song? And then they, if I'm doing a family session, I'll get their photos done and bribe them with, like, some doo-doo-doo shark thing. So I don't even know. Weird things. But it just yeah. Uh, talk about kind of your philosophy. You, know, you do like family and stuff too, and, and babies, and, and you know, obviously being the mom. And talk about just kind of how how you approach that, and, and kind of try to make that your own. Um, usually, well, with the studio now, it's easier. So it's low season. I'm like, all right, there's not a lot of weddings happening in the winter time. It's cold. Uh, summer is crazy busy. So my downtime in the winter, I'll set up uh, portrait sessions and stuff for families. And it's, it's super easy and super relaxed. Um, but in order to make it my own, I think it's more of like, this is my, I got to set my own backdrops up now, my own like setup, and I don't use actual backdrops. So it's always like props and different things like that. What am I going to bring in to do it? Uh, for Easter, I brought in a live bunny. We did live bunny photos. It was the funnest thing ever because I got to pet a bunny. <laughs> I was super excited about this nine pound bunny. Um, but it was even funner to watch like a two year old sit in a wagon with this bunny that was just like, yeah, you got carrots. But... <laughs> That's awesome. And it was then, so yeah, fun. <laughs> uh, and then for weddings, you know, what kinds of couples are, do you find you want to work with you that, that are excited to work with you, that you're inspired by? What kind of couples do you feel like you meld with the best? Um, usually like humorous, like they got to have a sense of humor. They got to be upbeat and they're usually more like fun. Like it, the whole reason that if they're going to book with me, it's because of my attitude. And I've been working with um, lately a lot of people from out of the country. So like I have a wedding that's, uh, I just had a wedding of like, like a German girl and an Indian man that met in Mexico, which was super fun because they did like Mexican tradition and like Bollywood dancing, which I was super happy. It was a whole mesh of things. And then I have a wedding, um, with a girl, uh, where's she from Denmark? She's from Denmark. She's flying in and marrying a guy here. So I'm working with a lot of different cultures and different like cultural experiences. Uh, and I think that they're booking with me because I'm just like, yeah, do whatever. Let's do it. How do you how do you market yourself? Is it trying to like like let the work sell itself? Like your personality, kind of a mix, word of mouth. I mean, how do you kind of try to market? Mostly right now, it's referral. It's word of mouth. Um, and if and if they're coming to me, they somebody's told them about me. Uh, marketing now, I don't want to put a whole bunch into like online stuff and running into couples. I've ran into couples and I'm like, okay, I don't think we're a good fit. And I won't, I won't work the wedding if we're not a good fit. I've done that before. And it just doesn't work out for both of us. I don't want to be stressed out and I don't want them stressed out. So if it's, if it's not a good fit, that's why and most people who have heard about me, they know they've been warned. They know what's coming. So <laughs> No, but that is the hardest thing I think for a lot of like new businesses is like trying to figure out like being able to say no or not. Um, I just had that was it last week where we had done we had emailed back and forth and then I had sent them over work and then like we got on a Skype call and it was like, well, this is you know, can you do this? And I was like, well, that's not like, especially for like video, I feel like I'm really able to send you like kind of exactly what you're gonna get. You know, we're like. I, I think photo too. I mean, I can't, I just, I don't live in that world, but like I can give you an eight minute thing that shows what you're going to get. And then when you're like, well, actually we really want like, well, how is your after effects game and how do you work with it? And I was like, I don't like do I, you know, and someone is, but it's not, it's always interesting having those conversations. Yeah, I have lately been delivering because I've got clients. I'll deliver in like the crisp, nat crisp natural look. And then I also have a filter that I created that I use as well. And so, but because I would want both, I've been sending my clients the option of both. And it's like, all right, you want like this muted look here? And here's the actual photo because who knows in 10 years if that muted look, you're just going to look back and be like, oh, goodness. It's like color pop on black and white. We're just like, oh, I did that. I totally did that. It's not cool anymore. Uh, so I want to give them the option to have both sets. Yeah, that's stuff we've talked with a lot with photographers on here about like, 
you know, style and, and it's just, there's always, you know, new styles and with video too. And like you said, like, I mean, nowadays it's like bright highlights, like super, super bright, like everything's so bright, like it's so bright. And I don't know if in 10 years that'll hold up or if, you know, if it looks like, I don't know. I mean, what do you, what do you think about kind of current photography styles? I shoot, um, I kind of want to just show it how it is. I don't necessarily want it super, I'm not a super bright and light and airy photographer. I'm like a, here, this is what it looks like. And this is how you can see it versus I like the details. I want to see that. I'll drop my highlights down just so I can see those details. Um, and skin tone is, is a good thing. I like, you know, non-orange skin tone. It's great. Uh, <laughs> So I think that I, in the years to come, it's going to like bounce back and forth. It's kind of like fashion, like bell bottoms are coming back already. And I was like, all right, well, give me 15, 20 years. This will be back, but it'll be back slightly different. So I don't think anything's permanent, but the here and the now, like the actual photo, the, like the original photo out of, straight out of camera is more, I think, applicable long-term. I would agree with that. But also it's interesting that you kind of send over those options. Yeah, and usually, and usually they'll use the the like um, edited one for like Instagram and Facebook and all that. And I'm like, all right, glad I sent it. Or the well, I'd rather your filter though than them kind of adding a filter. Oh, you know, they'll put they... a filter over it. Are you kidding me? And I'm like, I'm not one to get upset about it. I'm like, they do you? Those are your photos. Have fun, but that looks awful. I was like, don't tag me in that. <laughs> <laughs> we had a friend that yeah, she was talking about her photos, and she's like, well. I didn't really like them, but then I found like one filter that made them, then I liked them. I'm like, that's not how that works. Like, that's not at all like how that, that you didn't like them. And then, cause you added the one filter and made it like, you know, stomachable for you. That's not how, that's not how it's supposed to work working. You're supposed to find the photographer with the right look that you like in general, not supposed to be throwing them on Instagram to like them like seven different Instagram pictures. So. Oh. What do you wish more people knew about you? Uh, and it could be personality wise. It could be, you know, photography, you, questions you wish clients asked kind of in the booking process. What do you wish that more people knew? I don't really have that. Um, I usually I'm straightforward about everything. And if I want you to know it, I'll tell you it. Um, and I'll tell you it in an email. I'm not going to, there's nothing there. Um, I wish that they would be aware of pricing though ahead of time when it comes to studio work. Um, and to put a value, like if you don't, if you're not going to value it at this and you're not going to read my email that like maps it out for you, don't get upset with me because you can't read. So, um, what do you mean the pricing's out pricing, there? No like, can... So like for in studio sessions, you have a studio, a set studio fee, and then it includes like maybe five images, but they're expecting for that set studio fee to be delivered all images. And I was like, that's the ones I'm delivering to you are already edited. If you'd like to pick ones to be edited, we can do that, but I'm not releasing boudoir images that aren't edited. So. Yeah. Cause that's probably a little more could be stuff in there that maybe you don't want to see, There's right? a lot of work in those. And you've got like skin and everything has to be touched up. And if you don't have proper makeup on, then it just ruins everything. So that's why I have a makeup artist that works with me. She's freaking awesome. Uh, finally kind of, you know, wrapping up here, what do you, when you're not working and obviously, you know, mom, you have an amazing you know, kid, what do you, what do you guys do for fun? And what do you do to kind of get an outlet from, from the studio kind of photography life? Um, I take, I, this is like my first year of actually taking time off. Like I booked, like blocked time out of my calendar because I was so burnt out last year. I had to take all of September off. I was like, my feet hurt. I'm not doing this. I just went to Vegas and for a concert and I ended up in three days seeing like four or five shows, which was fantastic. Um, and I'm taking a week off and I'll be home for part of it. And I'm going to Portland. Um, I kicked the kiddo out with my, with my parents for a while. Cause I've got her Monday through Friday and we're always at the beach together. So that's why during the summertime I have a tan and the winter time I'm glow in the dark white. So what did you see in Vegas? Um, we went and saw the whole point was to go see black bear, but we ended up seeing uh tie dollar sign G easy, not G easy. We saw him before we saw a tie dollar sign Diplo uh, DJ shift. And there was another artist. We were, I was so tired. It was, it was the most, I had the biggest blisters. I was like, I'm going to need a week before this wedding. So I didn't do anything for like three days, but like stay off my feet and work when I got, I worked like, so I flew in on Tuesday and Tuesday afternoon we got home. And the first thing I did was open my laptop and start working. Um, and then I took like a 12 hour nap. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's awesome. Uh, yeah, that was like because we were getting ready for this. I'm like, oh, so what are you doing? Like, well, I'm editing right now, and then I have a client coming in at three, and you know, it's like trying to, you know, you got to get it in when you can. So yeah, and I'm like, you know what? Portland's next. I'm gonna go down there and um, going down with a friend. We're gonna go have some fun just for a weekend, just to get out and not and not bring my camera with me. And I'm leaving. This was the first trip I think. In like since I started photography, where I didn't bring my laptop with me, so I didn't that, I didn't even have the option to work. Was that hard? It was terrible. I was like having almost like a panic attack on the plane. I was like, I need my laptop, but I figured it out. I still sent emails. I'm not gonna lie. I still responded to emails via my phone. I still responded to text messages and questions, and you know, released an album if I needed to. But I definitely did not edit photos while I was on technical vacation. <laughs> Where uh, last question? What's your uh, five year plan? Where are you trying to grow? Where are you trying to build? Uh, where are you trying to kind of expand out? I cannot wait to train more photographers and contract work out to them and travel more. I've did I've done a couple out of country weddings, a couple out of state weddings, but my goal would be to travel long term and just shoot boudoir if possible and train other photographers to come in and do the work that maybe I don't want to do, but they do. That's awesome. You're build, building an army. I like yes, it. Yes. It's going to take over. <laughs> uh, this has been, uh, you know, so nice to kind of get to catch up. And I know we kind of talk online a lot. It's been forever since we've seen each other face to face. I really kind of appreciate you hopping on and doing this. And uh, it's just been so fun. If you want people to know more about you and, and your photography and corporate and food and lifestyle and boudoir and everything else, what would you have them check out? My website, sohphotos.com. Just go and there. We talked about, and that's uh, that's based on your grandparents' farm, right? Yeah, Seven about. of Hearts. I, Seven of Hearts Photography.com is active as well, but that's really long to type in. So SOHphotos.com is way easier. Sounds great. And yeah. then obviously online and Instagram. And yeah, everything. I'm everywhere. You can't get rid of me. <laughs> Uh, perfect. Then this has been another episode of get to know your wedding pro. If you are a wedding vendor interested in coming on the podcast and sharing your story, you can go to uh, www.bestmadevideos.com slash podcast guest. I have a nice uh, questionnaire. I did not make you fill it out because I know you and, and we go way back, but if you're someone I don't know yet and you want to get on the radar, that's a good way to do it. And we can get you scheduled to come on and share your story. Woo. Well, thank you again. This has been another episode of Get to Know Your Wedding Pro. Check back next week for another wedding vendor interview. Thanks so much. Bye.